Hey guys, um, I just wanted to turn um, this presentation into a kind of video presentation so that you guys could get a little bit more than just reading through the presentation. So we're gonna talk about the perspectives in mental health. Um, this is kind of, it starts in the beginning of time and then works its way up to closer to now and um, just about mental health. So some of this is gonna be a little bit of stuff that we went over in the beginning, but not all of it. So, um, in the beginning of time, um, they would they labeled mentally ill with terms like witches, evildoers, lunatics. Um, they thought that the mentally ill were crazy. Um, they didn't understand that they had something wrong with them mentally. Um, the ancients dealt with this abnormal behavior by performing rituals. Um, they had shamans, magicians, and priests that would do those. Um, they also give potions to um, get rid of the evil spirits um, that they thought were taking over the people's bodies. Um, and they also performed exorcisms to rid the bodies of evil spirits um, if they were showing signs of abnormal behavior. Um, archae archaeological evidence demonstrates that they used trepanation during this time period. Um, they would drill a hole into the skull to release the evil spirit. That was also something that they used to um, rid people of headaches sometimes too, um, but uh, it was often used um, on people that had that showed signs of abnormal behavior. Um, the ancient Greeks believed that the mentally ill were possessed and that they were being punished by the gods for their wrongdoings. Um, they also felt that prayer could cure their possession. So instead of actually treating these people that um, had mental illnesses, they would pray for them and pray that they got better. Um, Hippocrates was a Greek physician and he believed that the origin of mental disorders or an imbalance of the body. Um, he thought that it was imbalance of either blood, phlegm, yellow bile, black bile, or some combination of the four. Um, and he thought that um, depression um, resulted from an excess of black bile. He used the term melancholy to refer to depression. Melon uh, meaning black and collie meaning bile. Um, and those, that's still, melancholy is still a way of describing depression to this day. During the Middle Ages, there was widespread belief that witchcraft and demonic possession were the causes of insanity. Um, they thought that abnormal behavior was evidence of devil's work and that the treatment of these, those people was the responsibility of the church. So they took their mentally ill family members, townspeople to the church and said, all right, you have to deal with them because we need you to get the evil out of them. And during the Renaissance, the ancients believed that the movements of the moon and the stars caused madness. The terms lunacy and luna, meaning moon, were derived during this time to label people who acted abnormal. Um, there are still people that believe strongly that the phases of the moon affect behavior um, and that people act different during different phases of the moon. Um, there were things called the insane asylums during the 1500s. They were special institutions that were built to house the mentally ill. Um, they were chaotic. They had unsanitary living conditions. The Bethlehem Asylum was one of the worst. It was nicknamed Bedlam, meaning confusion and noise. There were pots in the rooms for residents to use as toilets. The residents were not only filthy and unclothed, but they were also malnourished to the point of starvation. Um, the people that worked in these insane asylums didn't necessarily want to be there, um, so they didn't care too much for their patients. Um, at Bedlam, money was charged and the public was invited to watch patients that were displayed and who were displayed in cages. Um, they would laugh at them as they banged their heads repeatedly on the walls. 
Some would even poke them with sticks and throw things at them. Um, the morals during that time period were much lower, I guess, would be a good way of saying it, than we have now. Now we have morals that tell us that it's not okay to um, laugh at people that act different or poke people that act different. Back then, they thought it was perfectly fine. Um, in the colonial times, people who behaved abnormally were thought to be in league with the devil, um, and only a dunking test could resolve that allegation. Um, a dunking test was the ultimate no-win situation, because if a possessed woman possessed woman did not drown, then she was thought to be in league with the devil, at which point they would execute her by some other means. Um, if she did drown, she was innocent, but she was dead because she drowned. Um, so anyone could accuse anyone of being possessed, um, and they oftentimes accused people who acted abnormally, who didn't act like everyone else in the town, um, of being possessed, too. And then they had to go through that situation. Um, in the 1840s, the French physician Felipe Pinel supervised the unchaining of hospital inmates. Um, his mental health reforms led to the widespread movement called moral therapy. That was when they started to realize and started to spread information that it's not okay to tie our siblings and our um, townspeople up in these buildings and not feed them or chain them to a wall or let people come and throw sticks at them or laugh at them. We need to start treating them better. They're humans. They may not be exactly like us, but they're still humans and we they deserve better. Dorothea Dix was an American school teacher. Um, in the 1840s, she campaigned for the humane treatment of the mentally disturbed. She persuaded legislature to provide state funds for improving mental institutions. And I believe she either had a son or a brother who um, had a mental issue. And that's why she was led to, to wanting better treatment. Um, and so she, she put out, she, she set out on making sure that they were treated better. Um, set out on making sure that there were some changes in the way mental hospitals were run um, so that even people that needed to be hospitalized for their mental illness were at least treated fairly and treated well. Emil Treplin, um, he was a German psychiatrist. Um, and in 1883, he developed a system for diagnosing and classifying mental illnesses. The principles of the Kraepelin system are still important to the classification of mental illnesses today. Um, he was one of the most influential psychiatrists of his time. If you are a family member or a friend, um, Ezra has to be um, seen for some type of um, possible mental issue, either depression, anxiety, or something else. There's lots out there. Um, you will likely be given a either the Kraepelin test or a form of the Kraepelin test or a, another test that has some of the same types of questions that his test had on it um, to help figure out where on the big spectrum of mental illnesses um, what you're going through fits. Um, and there's other, there's tons of tests now, but that's where most of them started. And that is our last slide. Um, so if you have any questions about any of these slides, this just kind of basically gives you the history of mental illnesses um, and kind of how things have changed over time. Um, things are still changing. Um, P, there's more, more public publicity and publications about mental health now. Um, people are trying to make it um, not so taboo or so um, horrible in that making it okay to talk about a mental illness if you're having an issue with something, if you're depressed, 
if you're suicidal, etc. There's so many places that you can reach out to now for help. Um, and it's not, um, it's not looked down on anymore. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of the presentation with me talking because normally if we were in class, I would have talked through the presentation and I would have answered questions while you were um, while you're looking at it. If you have any questions at all about it, please shoot me a message and I will answer it for you. Um, and in fact, I'll actually do this as a, as a discussion so that if you have any questions, you can um, write the questions down at the bottom. Um, just do a reply like we do when, our, when we're doing our um, warm-ups. Um, that way I can respond right there and other people can see the answers too, just in case anyone has the same question. All right, you guys have a great day um, and I'll see you later.